Hey, what are you doing? What are you doing? Come here. Good boy. Uh, hey guys, Leroy Diesel. Gonna try to put together a video clip here of uh, putting a um, reluctor wheel on a crankshaft. And so that's kind of a big and kind of a somewhat big job. I've got to get all the way down and get the timing cover off of this thing. So some of this is going to be super, super basic. Um, you start by removing the fan shroud. You've got three bolts on top. Right here, one, two, three. I'm not going to actually bore you with details of watching me do all this stuff. Then you got four bolts down there. One, two, and two on the other side. I reach down with a long extension, grab those. Uh, this catch can's got to come off. This probably is not on your vehicle unless obviously you've, unless you've installed one. Battery cable's got to come out of the way. I'll get the fan trout off. I'll get the fan blade, all that off of there. And I'll see you on the next clip. Okay, so got the fan trout off. And the next thing is going to be to get this. Uh, this is a spin-on type clutch and a water pump. If you notice on most fan blades there's actually a wider section at least in one of the sections i think this one has two there's one on each side i won't anyway i could spin it over and show you there's another wider section like right here compared to here you can see it's a couple inches that allows i don't know if they design it that way but it allows you to get in there with a with you know more tools and stuff anyway something to think about next time you're doing one spin it over to the wide side there's usually a gap on your fan blade so I'm going to pop that off. One tip is um, sometimes what I do is I just go ahead and just get it out. I don't even mess around with anything else. Just get an air chisel and you can just pop that right on the corner of the hex so that the hex will be turning counterclockwise. Leave the belt on and everything so you have some tension on the pulley. Pop that nut and um, that came out wrong but you know what I'm saying? Pop that nut right there going counterclockwise and this fan blade, the whole thing will unscrew. You pull it out and I'll see you on the next one. Okay, so next little tip is I've got the clamp off the lower radiator hose and what I do is I usually screw the clamp back onto the water pump so that it won't fall down into those buckets. I got two buckets down there. Just something else, you know, another little pain in the ass if you got to reach down in there and get that clamp out of there. Um, so I got this broken loose. It's about ready to pull off. I'm going to open that up. Everything's going to come gushing out into those buckets. Hopefully I catch all of it because I got a couple hundred dollars worth of Evans coolant in this thing. And uh, the drain, you might be asking, why don't I just go over here to the drain? Is because I want to modify that too terrible design uh, when you open that drain valve over there it just goes ever everywhere as you guys know all down your frame it's dripping everywhere so that's a suck design um, for years I've been meaning to do something about that so the best way I found is just to dump it right here it's gonna come gushing out and it comes out in such a volume that you kind of catch everything majority of it instead of it over here just kind of dripping coming down your frame rail and your coolant's getting all contaminated and all that so wish uh i guess uh wish me the best or whatever that saying is hope for the best um and we'll catch you on the next one okay next step is going to be getting that pulley off of there i've broken them loose um got the serpentine belt off of here all that's been done so i'm going to reach down here And be careful because that pulley will fall off of there. So I'm going to do that last bolt by hand while using my other hand to hold the pulley. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. By the way, that pulley is available. It's a billet pulley. Go to LeroyDiesel.com. Okay, so I was actually lucky. This one was not very tight anyway. I wouldn't have had to use an air chisel. But let me show you what I've got. Is just your average guy in your driveway could use this setup is get the belt off then on your pulley I got a, a tiny pipe wrench you could 
use one a little bit bigger, but the idea is to catch it right there behind the pulley. And if your um, fan clutch is super tight, then be careful. You don't want to deform or bend your pulley. So if you get to the point where you're feeling like you're putting enough torque that you're going to damage the pulley, you're going to have to find another method. And you might also be asking, why don't we use the tool that you can rent to AutoZone and things like that? Those things suck. That's why. Um, um, yeah, they just, they're not good. Not any ones I've ever seen. But, okay, so anyway, you get the wrench on here. You get it butted up against something solid. Get a big crescent wrench right here I've got and that goes down to the nut and yeah that's about all it took for me to get it off off camera before I prepped this uh, video so it wasn't on there super tight I do use anti-seize on those threads though so last time I put this together I pookied that up with a bunch of anti-seize and I think that helped a lot so now it's just a matter of unthreading this clutch and doing this with one hand it's gonna fall down I gotta be careful it doesn't damage the radiator so make sure you don't damage your radiator when this falls off. Let's see if I can do this. I felt like it was towards the end of the thread already, but more on there than I thought. Oh, there it goes. Okay, so I kept it from hitting the radiator. And then I'll get that out of there. See you on the next one. Okay, so what I've decided to do is I'm going to show you how you can do this without any kind of special tools, such as the air chisel. Um, like I just showed you in the previous clip. So in this case, what you need to do is, and on this tensioner, yours may be different. That's what takes a half inch drive, like on the 95 and older, uh, you just have to release that tension. Um, I, I think you just got to get a wrench on the bolt. On the 96 and newer, there's a provision right here. So you, I won't, again, I'm trying to make these clips as quickly as I can. I'm just gonna release the tension like you see there and I can't do get the belt off while holding the camera. So I'll get that off of there and I'll show you what I do for the water pump pulley to hold it still on the next one. Okay, I'm gonna to try to show you what's going on here, draining this coolant. I'm just gonna slowly do this because again, this Evan's coolant is so expensive. There we go. Just kind of crack that hose off the water pump and it'll it's somewhat controllable going into those uh, buckets down there. So I'll get that out of there and we'll catch you on the next one. I think I'll be doing the harmonic balancer next. Okay, so now I'm trying to get the harmonic balancer crankshaft bolt out, the center one. Super tight, but you can see I got the impact on here. And... Um, it's right up against the radiator, so I don't want to back that bolt out all the way because it could damage the radiator. I just you literally just want to break that loose, and you could use wrenches or ratchets or whatever else you got at your disposal to accomplish the same thing. But if you're trying to use an impact, just be careful that you don't push into the radiator on this side. So let me see if I can get that one-handed. Oh, I got it untightened. There it goes. See, I I caught it way before it could get into the radiator. I'm going to suck it back down clockwise. It, it's kind of bottomed out there. And now I can sort of work that socket off of there and twist the impact. So be careful if you're using that method. Um, otherwise, use uh, regular um, wrenches, extension bars, all that kind of thing. Um, this literally zipped it off in about five seconds. Um, putting it back together, definitely don't use the impact. You could kind of zip it down a little bit, but then you obviously want to do that final torque. Um, the torque value on that bolt is 200 pounds. So there you go. See you on the next one. Okay, just showing you the beginnings of the harmonic balancer, harmonic balancer installation tool and removal tool so the way you you get this i'm just showing you this because it's also for rent on the website um it'll come zip tied with the insert the threaded insert there and then um, it comes in a plastic bag throw that to the side and then i also zip tie this mainly just for shipping purposes 
so that it doesn't you know get all loose in the box as long as they're available i will also include four bolts so the, these bolts happen to be 5 8 inch this happens to be 5 8 inch so i've got a 5 8 setup here uh, that'll be for holding or turning whatever you happen to be needing to do this inner shaft and then on the outer sleeve it takes an inch and a sixteenth or in this case a 27 millimeter there it goes 27 millimeter on the outside so I'll get that set up and I'll show you a little bit more how it works okay the next step and just to clarify when you're removing the harmonic balancer you're going to need to use two one two of your original crankshaft pulley bolts I'm going to set that aside on my little trusty car dolly and on the tool itself there is a flat side and then a beveled side you want to set it up just like you see here this is going to push let me get my finger on it that's going to push against the crankshaft so it doesn't damage the threads and then um, the bolts you'll only use two of them they'll go 180 degrees from each other I'm trying to get that set up it's off camera okay so you'll get that set up kind of like that 180 degrees from each other screw that into two of the bolt holes on the balancer I'll show you what that looks like on the next one oh yeah just to clarify you'll reuse these two bolts from the pulley and then those four bolts are going to be for when you use the holding tool for torquing the uh, crankshaft bolt back down which I'll show you here in a few minutes okay so the next thing I'm going to do is remove this side of the bracket the alternator side this again this is a 96 and newer so 96 to 02 on a truck uh, you've got two studs that the whole bracket rests on hopefully we can see that one right here one just a little higher so that's two two 15 millimeter nuts up inside right back here where you see my finger there's a 13 millimeter and you you might have to get a um, uh, ratchet on this thing and move the pulley up while you access that or you, some, you may have enough room without doing that and then back oh this glare is so bad back over here I'm kind of pointing in the general direction but back behind the alternator here is another bolt and once you get that off then it's just resting on these two studs and the thing will slide off basically at that point now I do want to make sure and point out that you should be disconnecting your battery because this terminal on the alternator is hot and um, disconnect the battery and then remove that and what I'm planning on doing is just taking this whole thing off of here and let me get that disconnected and um, so real simple on this side and then I'll get to the other side in a few minutes okay so here's the balancer removed and you can see that the blunt end of that tool is what presses up against the crankshaft let me, yeah you see that well again no cameraman I need a cameraman there we go the inner part of the tool is what presses up against the crankshaft so you don't damage the threads then when you get that thing pulled off of there you can just disassemble the tool put your bolts back in your pulley and then get set up for the next thing which I got to figure out what that's going to be now. It's going to be some kind of bracketry, I think. Um, so we'll see you on the next one. Okay, so this is the, the setup. Is I've got the 5H ratchet on here set up as if I was going to turn this clockwise. But you're not going to turn this. It's just holding it there stationary while you turn this wrench on the slider portion of the tool. I just, it's not. I just started, so I'll sort of be able to show you yeah see how I'm turning that and as it gets tighter then it's going to put more resistance on that and it might start trying to turn the whole thing that's why you've got to hold the inner portion stationary 
so I'll get that buzzed off of there and um, continue on okay so I'm gonna throw this diagnostic tip in for you guys I have to explain this one on the phone a lot and if I put it in this video maybe I won't get so many phone calls and can can do other creative things so right here is your crankshaft sensor lead right there it goes down inserts into the timing cover it comes up and this is the other side of it it's a three pin connector your optic sensor just for reference is right there I'm pointing to it I know it's kind of crowded in there I got my PMD extension cable right there but the optic sensor is right there it's a kind of a square looking sensor right in the top of the injection pump so if you've got problems with you know it's kind of different symptoms but if your truck's not running well if it's running rough uh, doesn't idle good that kind of thing and you've tried the obvious things like fuel pump PMD you know you've tried everything else then one of the diagnostics I suggest is with the engine running you're gonna unplug the crankshaft sensor right here the engine should continue to run um, and you may not even notice any difference it'll keep running smoothly unless the optic sensor right here is bad then the engine is going to die if the engine dies when you unplug this then the optic sensor is bad and by the way if it's only running on the crank sensor the engine's probably running real rough anyway which might be why you're trying to do this diagnostic so again unplug this which is the crankshaft if the engine dies your optic sensor is bad if the engine continues to run, just plug it back in, then do the opposite. Now, with the engine running, unplug your optic sensor. The engine will stumble and it will run rough because you're only running on the crankshaft sensor. But if the engine dies, chances are that your crankshaft sensor is bad. So it's like vice versa. Unplug one and test the other one. The optic sensor is a very, very fine resolution. Uh, tells the computer exactly where the engine is all the time um, where I, I forget the exact number it's like 520 or 560 anyway it's a lot of reference points that the optic sensor sees per revolution um, I, I know I'm wrong on that number put it in the comments section when you know the uh, correct answer um, so that's a very fine resolution. The engine runs smoothly on that. This one is like four uh, senses per revolution. And um, so you can see that's quite an extreme difference. And anyway, uh, let me get back into... Um, well, I'll cut the video there because I can make this into a double video. It'll be part of my... Well, I'll cut it right there. <laughs> we'll see you on the next clip. Okay, so previously we got the whole alternator bracket side off. Now uh, this fishes up through here in this area, and it typically is connect. Well, it is connected to that connector, but it's fishing its way up into this area and gets plugged in there. This is the crankshaft sensor. So what I did is I unplugged it, and then I pulled it out so that when this timing cover comes off, it won't be snagged up. So, um, and it doesn't look like any of this needs to come off. So I'm going to start trying to dig into getting the water pump off of here and getting down into that timing cover. Okay, so now we're into the water pump removal. It'll be the water pump and the backing plate all comes off in one piece. I've got the bypass hose disconnected. Um so that it'll all come off it won't be attached to the crossover the filler neck tube doesn't need to come out um, yeah it shouldn't need to come out but once you there's four bolts here that these are the two studs that I was talking about earlier that hold the alternator bracket part of that on those come out and they're also just in case I forget to mention it later they get sealed and that's why it's, yeah the, the the threads on it get sealed when you reinstall with like black rtv so i'm gonna buzz this one out real quick that one's out let me get this one those also get sealant on them 
one is a stud at least on on this truck it is yours may be different on this truck there's nothing hooked to it and this one happens to be just a regular bolt so i'm going to get those oops, dropping tools everywhere i'm going to get those out then i've got the smaller um bolts around the timing cover those will come off and that water pump should pump pop off of there and then um we'll see on the next clip okay so there was also two more bolts right up under the water pump which aren't as visible i totally forgot about them but they go right up under here there's one and two so you got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen bolts holding this water pump on and then uh, once you get this assembly off of here then the water i'm not gonna i'm not doing this job so i mean i don't need to do this job so i'm just going to show you once you get the backing plate and the water pump off you've got more bolts back here that actually hold the water pump to the backing plate and if you're doing a water pump job doing the balance flow water pump system that kind of thing you'll have to take these off too to get the new water pump onto this backing plate obviously you'll clean up your all your gasket material and all of that and get it installed um, I don't need to do that except I do need to clean this surface so I can put it all back together um, that's it All right, when I took that lower bolt out, it's now dripping into my container. So you can see why that's so important to put sealant on these threads. You got three bolts on this side that all get sealant and two on the other. But if that wasn't sealed, can you imagine the leak you would have? So I'm gonna wait for that to drain and then continue. Okay, in the last clip I said you didn't have to take the oil filler tube off. You do, because I forgot about these two studs. So pop that off, and then there's two studs right here. I've already taken these one, two, three, and four is behind the bypass hose. And then you got five, six. So six bolts up here and four bolts down low. I think there's a third one right here, another um 15 millimeter i'll get that out and keep plugging away all right next thing is you've got three bolts in the timing gear this is the gear that drives the injection pump it can only go in one way so you should be good but just in case somebody got in this thing and bumped the engine over even though the batteries are disconnected but if somebody moved it then you would be off time. Uh, you know, if you pull this gear out and then somebody bumped the engine, uh, you would have to go back to your t original timing dots and all that and get it back in position. Uh, what I did here is I just marked it on each side, um, on the on the peak side of the timing uh, injection pump gear, and then I got it on another mark right in the middle of those two. I don't know if that's coming out. Yeah, right there, you should be able to see that. Anyway, I'm just doing that as a precaution. Literally took 10 seconds and shouldn't need it, but just in case. Now the next thing to do, I don't know if I can do this by hand. Yeah. Take that off. And now I've got this bolt and this bolt and then some around the perimeter. I'm pretty sure it's been, a, oh yeah, I got that one. I can't remember if it needs to come off, but there's this little oil heat shield here, which not all trucks have. And I'm having a little brain fart here, but I think there's bolts underneath this cover is the whole reason I'm taking this gear off. Um, oh, and plus I can't get the cover off with this on there. So common sense, duh. Um, see you on the next one. Okay, so yes, I was right. There's the one bolt right here and here which were here and here but they went through this thing and there's a nut right here which gets nutted down on this upper one i think this is some kind of oil shield to keep hot oil from 
getting up on your injection pump is the only thing I can figure. Um, I haven't every engine I haven't seen that has this, but that's again the only thing I can figure it's there for. Um, and I was right underneath the shield is one more bolt right there. You can see it. I'm gonna have to get it off, get these others, and I think I'm home free. I believe. Let me see. I again, it's been so long since I've done this on this i think yeah i've got two more bolts up under here which uh originally on the p400s don't have that but i went ahead and installed them last time i was in here doing that job so that's it um uh, one two three four five six seven eight nine and then this nut up here is ten and uh that cover will be off of there um getting under the truck there is going to be nasty though so that's not fun. Okay, so the next thing I've got to do is get the injection pump loose, which is right here, from the timing cover. So you've got those three nuts on studs. The studs are on the timing cover. The nuts are on the other side that hold the injection pump to the timing cover. Uh, Unfortunately, that means we're going to have to re-time this thing, which is not a big deal if you have a scan tool. Um, but what I was going to show you is what I did is I removed the turbo oil supply line from its location, which is right about here. And then that allowed it to relax enough where I could actually come in with a wrench right here and get the, the bottom passenger side nut off the injection pump. The upper one's real easy. And I'll be working on the other one um, next. Uh, so that's about it. Once I get that loose, I've still got to pop um, four, I think four bolts out. I got the, I went ahead and got these two out here from underneath. I was actually able to do it from up here. Just reach down and get them from here. And then I'll be getting these off and that cover is going to come off at that point. Okay, now we're down to the whole reason I'm doing this is back when I first did this, there was no um, reluctor wheel on there because I was running DB2 and I ran the spacer. So fluid dampers come with a spacer and that's what I was running right there. By the way, you can see how that was on there. There's a cupped there's there's more of a flat side it does have a bevel but it's flat that goes against the um crank gear and then the beveled side goes out because on your fluid damper the snout of it uh, let me get down here the snout of it right here which goes into the engine you want that to sit on there like that so hopefully that makes sense you see the bevel, the recessed end goes against the balancer. And this flat side goes against the uh, timing gear, or the crankshaft gear. Um, and also got this thing off. That was glued on there really good. From the last time I did it, I had to get a hammer and a, uh, an extension and tap on it kind of going this direction until it finally broke loose i kept looking did i leave a bolt in there what's happening but i got them all out and then it finally uh broke loose and i was able to get screwdriver in here to just kind of wedge it hold it in place and then i'd pull it a little more and wedge it a little more finally worked it off of there but it was just all the way around here the last time i did this job i i really you know really did a good job because it wasn't going anywhere i think i could have towed this truck around if i would have latched a chain to it um so that's it i'm gonna it's kind of starting to get dark here i'm gonna put up for the night uh come back clean all these services everywhere and um oh this is the when, when, also behind here are my time my timekeeper gear set so that's also part of the whole reason that i'm doing this is um you know when you go to a timekeeper uh you can run db2 which would be like i just showed you or you could run ds4 and it's going to take a special uh double hump crankshaft key 
and then this reluctor wheel that's the main difference let me see this is okay yeah cool so it went on there pretty good it's, it's brand spanking new i might need to take a little emery cloth or something and deburr that but it's a brand new machine part so um that'll slide on there and everything will go back together this gets if you can imagine just some people uh, anyway i just let me get that back on there if i can yeah, it slid right on there a second ago there it goes i'm not going to force it all the way down but when that's all the way down and then you put in your harmonic balancer and then you put 200 pounds of torque on that bolt that that balancer is just pushing into that so this is not going anywhere it's riding on the on the keyway but it's get it's mechanical clamped that way um so that reluctor wheel's not going anywhere unless your crankshaft pulley i mean a uh, balancer comes undone and gets sloppy but it, it's pressed on there so it should not go anywhere um was i out of focus that whole time so th that's about it uh we'll catch you not that it matters to you right now because you won't know the difference but i'm going to get back here tomorrow and we'll continue all right just a very quick video clip here i've got everything cleaned up down there i've just put the uh gasket sealer on here the gasket maker the black rtv stuff and um so I've got a bead all the way around it, a real thick bead down here. And I'm waiting for that to tack up just a little bit, but I can't be too long. So I've got to time this. Um, I'm going to slap that on there and continue on. Okay, so pretty much from here on out, it's just the reverse of what I have shown you in the previous clips. But I'll do these things real quick. Got the timing cover on, got everything torqued down, got the shield back in. Uh, getting ready to put the timing gear back on and I'll catch you on whatever I think might need to be there for information. Okay, so I'm going to put the harmonic balancer on now that I've got real good access to it. Um, on the tool itself, you can see now the flat side of the tool is going against the balancer. I've got the threaded insert that goes in the threaded portion. It's threaded into the crankshaft. And you want to get that as far into the crankshaft as you can and then adjust this up to the balancer you want as much meat in that uh, crankshaft as you can and um, so it's pretty self-explanatory from this point i'm going to hold this wrench while i turn this wrench clockwise and that's going to push that balancer right on um, so let's catch you on the next one Okay, so now I've got the alternator bolted down, secured, uh, put the belt on. I showed you um, how to get the belt off. You can put a half inch breaker bar. Some of them are three eighths. You relieve the tension or you take tension off and then you can slide the belt under. Getting ready to put the fan clutch back on. And I think it's getting a little dark. I didn't realize how dark it was already. Um, here. Right there, you can see I haven't threaded it on yet, but I just, uh, to let you know, I smear that with anti-seize because those things can be a real pain in the ass to get off in the future. But as you saw that when I took this one off, it was actually pretty simple, but you just, that's all you do, just bottom it out. And then uh, as the engine turns, it's gonna put more torque into it and it will just naturally tighten up. I don't find any reason to tighten them up um it just kind of creates a problem hey kitty my kitty's coming to help what are you doing hey you helping <laughs> anyway uh that's it i'll get the shroud back on um i think we're down to it after that i put the coolant back in it and Put the catch can back together. Okay, you're not helping anymore. Um, getting down to it. Put the batteries, hook the batteries back up. And uh, I'll catch you on the next one. Say hi, kitty. Hey, kitty. 
Okay, so got the alternator bracket on here. It's just loose. You can see it loose there. I just wanted to show you that those water pump studs make real nice uh, lineup pins and once you can slide that on there and it takes the weight off. So that's real nice. Um, and so I just wanted to show you that. I'm gonna put these two nuts on, put the two bolts. That, these are 15 millimeter and then the uh, bolts are 13 and that's it. Okay, so I kind of got way ahead of myself and forgot the camera. Anyway, I've got the water pump back on it and that's just a matter of reversing what I showed you earlier. You got five main bolts. You'll get the uh, gasket on there, get your sealant on there. I use the black RTV. Um, one little tip, it's kind of common sense, but I put the bolts through the water pump as I was putting the whole pump down in here and that way they kind of acted like lineup pins because they got to go th all the way through the cover and then it kind of supports the weight as you kind of start working the bolts in and also just as a reminder seal all these threads not right here but on the block side seal all the threads that going into the block because those are going into water passages if you don't seal those they're probably going to leak um, got that lower radiator hose on got the billet pulley back on and got the bypass hose on I'm getting ready to put the uh, filler neck oil filler neck back on once I get that I'm gonna put the alternator bracket stuff on and we're zooming along okay so here is the crankshaft holding tool installed you can see it right there four bolts hold that into the balancer then you can get a half inch breaker bar and you can do this from underneath the truck too, by the way. Um, but in this case, I just ran it up here right to the thermostat crossover. Uh, that way when you turn the engine or turn that bolt clockwise, it's gonna jam this up and prevent the crankshaft from moving, which means you can get a lot of torque on this. And dummy me, I went and forgot my torque wrench it's up it's at the shop so i'm just going to get it as tight as i can basically with this big long bar and then tomorrow when i am got the torque wrench i'm going to come back over here and confirm that this is 200 pounds um so that's how that works okay so this is going to be the last little video in this series uh so just going to do a little cold start up it's I don't know, it's pretty cold for us down here in South Texas, but nothing for you northern guys. Um, and I've got the timing set. I think that's where I was. I, it's been about a week since I did the last little clip, but I just wanted to show a wrap-up so I can get this thing posted. But I got the timing set. I've got it set a little more on the aggressive side. It's at a negative 1.6. Um, and so here we go. I'm just going to do a cold startup. Wait for the glow plugs. Oop. Wait for the glow plug. I'll flip it over to the rear view mirror. You can see it does give a pretty good puff of smoke on startup. There we go. Well, I think the smoke shot out so quickly. We didn't even see it. You see it out there in the yard, kind of wafting away. Usually kind of, you know, just stays right around the exhaust pipe there and but I maybe I don't know maybe there's some wind out there let me take you outside shut it off just so it's not so loud okay so yeah thing runs awesome I just went up to uh, Abilene and towed a car back down here got 18 miles a gallon doing it 
that's on the way back. That was loaded miles per gallon. Um, and so, yeah, pretty impressive. Um, got lots of power um, and real happy with this job. Um, anything you guys can think of or any questions, put it down in the comments. And you guys can always email me. at uh, Well, you go to my website, and then you can get my contact info there. Go to LeroyDiesel.com. My email's there. My phone number's there if you have any questions about these old 6.5 diesels. And um, we'll catch you guys soon. Have a good one.